oblique projectile motion. Any body is projected into air with some velocity at an angle theta with the horizontal is called oblique projectile motion. Oblique projectile motion is from the ground. Here initial velocity of the object is u bar and it makes an angle theta with the horizontal. But theta is not equals to 90 degrees and 0 degrees. Maybe when theta is equals to 0 degrees, object is moving along x direction. Or 90 degrees, then object is moving along y direction. That is only one dimensional motion. But here when we project other than 0 and 90, then this is two dimensional motion and the path followed by the object is a parabola. So it makes an angle theta with the horizontal. The component of the velocity along the x direction ux is equals to u cos theta and the vertical component uy is equals to u psi theta. Here a constant force is acting on the object that constant force is gravitational force. Due to the gravitational force, acceleration due to gravity is acting in downward direction and acceleration due to gravity is always acting in downward direction only. So here in vertical direction, acceleration is equals to G. But there is no acceleration along X direction. So acceleration along X direction is equals to zero. That means what about the velocity along the horizontal direction? Velocity along horizontal direction is uh, constant. So here u cos theta is uh, remains constant. But velocity along vertical direction changes. Initial velocity vector u bar is equals to ux i cap plus ui j cap. Here ux is u cos theta i cap plus u sin theta j cap. At any instant, this is the position of the object and the velocity of the object changes here. It makes an angle alpha. Then horizontal component of the velocity becomes to Vx cos alpha and the vertical component Vy sin alpha. But what about the acceleration along x direction? There is no acceleration equals to 0. Then Vx cos alpha is equals to u cos theta only. But vertical direction, velocity changes due to the acceleration due to gravity. To find out the vertical velocity, take the equation of motion. V is equals to u plus kt. Initial velocity along vertical direction u sin theta and acceleration is minus g and time is t. Here why we are taking minus sign? So let us take this is a positive x direction and a positive y direction. In downward direction it becomes negative y direction. So g is always acting in downward direction. So negative y direction that's why we are taking the sign minus g. So u sin theta minus g into t. This is the final velocity of the object along y direction at the given instant of time. Velocity at that point v bar is equals to vx i cap plus vy j cap. Here v cos alpha is equals to u cos theta. This is horizontal velocity. Horizontal velocity is remains constant. So now substitute these two components in place of vx u cos theta i cap and in place of vy u sin theta minus gt into j cap. To find out the velocity of the object at any point take the equation in this way. So here the particle is covers horizontal distance at the same time vertical distance. To find out the distance travelled by the object, take the equation S is equals to ut plus half at square. So horizontal distance let it be x and uh, velocity along the horizontal direction u cos theta and time is t.
But what about the acceleration? Zero. So x is equals to u cos theta into t. And from this t is equals to x by u cos theta. Within the same time only, object covers horizontal distance at the same time, vertical distance. So now, vertical distance, let it be y. y is equals to, in place of initial velocity, initial vertical component, u sin theta into t plus half into, in place of acceleration, minus g into t square. So time is the same. So substitute x by u cos theta in place of the time. Within the same time only it covers both horizontal and vertical distance. So in place of t substitute x by u cos theta. So from this y is equals to u sin theta into in place of t x by u cos theta plus half into minus g into in place of t square x square by u square cos square theta. And from this, y is equals to, here u, u get cancelled, sin theta by cos theta becomes to tan theta. So tan theta into x minus g by 2 u square cos square theta into x square. This is called equation of parabola or equation of trajectory. This is very very important students. You need to remember this formula equation of trajectory. Y is equals to tan theta into x minus g by 2 u square cos square theta into x square. This is called equation of projectile or equation of trajectory. In place of tan theta, y is equals to ax minus in place of g by 2 u square cos square theta, take b, b x square. So this is in the form of y is equals to ax minus b x square. Here we know the velocity at the given instant. To find out the resultant velocity, mod v bar is equals to square root of v x square plus v y square. Take this formula to find out the resultant velocity. Mod v bar is equals to square root of v x square plus v y square. At maximum height. In one dimensional motion, at maximum height we know velocity is equals to zero. But students don't confuse here. In case of the projectile motion, at maximum height velocity is not equals to zero. When velocity is equals to zero, Object moving in downward direction. But here object is not moving vertically downward direction. It follows the parabolic path. It is possible only when velocity is not equals to zero. So at maximum height, vertical velocity is zero. But horizontal component of the velocity remains constant that is u cos theta. At maximum height, velocity decreases and very small that is only u cos theta. Again in moving in downward direction, velocity gradually increases because acceleration due to gravity, motion of the object acting in downward direction. So again velocity increases. So moving in upward direction, velocity decreases at maximum height. Vertical component is zero but horizontal component is uh, remains constant. Now tell me one thing, what is the angle between initial velocity and acceleration due to gravity? The angle between Acceleration and initial velocity is 90 plus theta. At maximum height, angle between acceleration due to gravity and velocity is 90 degrees. Let us take the position of the object at this point. It is moving along this direction and G is acting in downward direction only. Now what about the angle here? Angle decreases. It becomes 90 minus theta. Angle between velocity and acceleration due to gravity is 90 plus theta. Then velocity decreases. But angle is 90 minus theta. Velocity increases. Take the equation. V square minus U square is equals to 2AS. Vertical component. So final velocity at maximum height along y direction is 0. And initial velocity is U sin theta only. So U sin theta whole square is equals to in place of a by minus g 
टू जी हेच सो ऑन बोथ साइड माइनस गेट कैंसिल्ड देन मैक्सीम हाइट इज ईक्वल टू यू स्क्वायर साइन स्क्वायर टीटा बै टू जी इन वन डायमेंशनल मोशन वॉट इज द फॉर्मुला फॉर द मैक्सीम हाइट u square by 2g but in projectile motion maximum height formula u square sin square theta by 2g u y is equals to u sin theta in oblique projectile motion maximum height formula is u square sin square theta by 2g so okay, now let us find out the time of ascent what is time of ascent The time taken by the projectile to reach the maximum height is called time of ascent. So take the equation v y is equals to u y plus a y into t. So at maximum height, vertical component of the velocity is zero, and in place of u y, u sine theta minus g into time of ascent. Let it be t one. Now from this g t one is equals to u sin theta, and time of ascent is equals to u sin theta by g. So again we get u y by g in one dimensional motion u by g, but here u sin theta by g. This is time of ascent. We know time of ascent is equals to time of descent. The time taken by the projectile to reach from maximum height to the ground. Is called time of descent. Time of ascent is equals to time of descent. This is only possible when a resistance is zero. So our assumption is a resistance is completely negligible. So time of ascent is equals to time of descent. Now time of flight. The time taken by the projectile is called time of flight. Time of flight is equals to time of ascent plus time of descent. Time of ascent u sine theta by g plus time of descent u sine theta by g, so that is equals to two u sine theta by g. In one-dimensional motion, formula for the time of flight two u by g, but in oblique projectile motion, time of flight formula is two u sine theta by g. This is point of projection and this is maximum height. and after time of flight this is the position of the projectile and what about this distance this is maximum horizontal distance the maximum horizontal distance is called range now the topic is range range is denoted with letter r the maximum horizontal distance is called a range range is denoted with the letter r range is equals to horizontal component of the velocity into time of flight remember this formula range is equals to horizontal component of the velocity into time of flight in place of ux take u cos theta And in place of the time of flight, we know time of flight is equals to two u sine theta by g. Substitute here, two u sine theta by g. And from this, u square into two sine theta into cos theta by g. And we know two sine theta cos theta is equals to sine two theta. Then u square sine two theta. By g, this is the formula for the range. When we get maximum range, so once look here, when sine two theta value becomes to one, then range is maximum. So in place of sine two theta, take one. From this, two theta is equals to sine ninety is equals to one. So ninety degrees theta is equals to forty five degrees. So when an object is projected with an angle 45 degrees then we get the maximum range so maximum range is equals to u square by g this is only possible when theta is equals to 45 degrees this is very very important point to get the maximum range angle of projection is 45 degrees 
when an object is projected by making an angle 45 degrees with the horizontal then range is maximum and now one more point here to the given velocity when we project a body initially with an angle 60 degrees and another body is projected with the same velocity but angle of projection is 30 degrees so once again listen carefully velocity is the same in these two cases but in one case angle of projection is 60 degrees and in another case angle of projection is 30 degrees then the horizontal distance travelled by the two bodies is the same that means range is same once add these two angles 60 plus 30 90 degrees so these two angles complementary angles so for complementary angles of projection with the same velocity then range is the same here one body is projected with an angle 60 degrees and another one is projected with an angle 30 degrees but what about the range in in these two cases range is same Range is the same for complementary angles of projection. That is theta 1 plus theta 2 is equals to 90 degrees. Hope up to here it is everything clear to you. So in oblique projectile motion, we discussed how to find out the velocity at any instant of time. And equation of trajectory. And at maximum height, vertical component of the velocity is 0 but horizontal is not equals to 0. At point of projection, angle between acceleration due to gravity and velocity is 90 plus theta. Then velocity gradually decreases and minimum at maximum height. And it is moving in downward direction. Velocity is 90 minus theta. Velocity goes on increases once again. And here equation of trajectory is very very important. And the next one, maximum height formula, time of ascent, time of descent and time of flight. And the range formula and when we get maximum range when angle of projection is 45 degrees then range is maximum. And the complementary angles uh, range is same for the given velocity. Okay students I hope it is very clear up to this topic. Next video class I will explain the point of striking the ground. When projectile touches to the ground what about the component of velocities everything I will discuss in next video class. At the same time. When one projectile is seen from the another projectile, what about its velocity, everything is in next video class. Thank you everyone.